They say once you see that steel arc, you know you're home. The emblem of Newcastle of the Northeast. So good, the brand went global and they built a version across Sydney Harbour in Australia. But now, five years off its 100th birthday, the strain is beginning to tell on the Tyne Bridge. 70,000 vehicles a day. So it needs the mother of all sandblast operations back to raw steel. Five coats of paint, several years work in time for that centenary. Lovely old iron staircase. Yeah. So this was built to gain access to the main bridge then, or, or why yeah, was so this built? The function of the towers is to support the bridge. So you wow. See the steel work. <laughs> it's huge. Yeah. With the Refurb's chief engineer, we were given exclusive access inside the bridge's giant steel and concrete towers. You can literally see it falling apart, can't you? There's bits of this coming off here. So the, the, the tower is a steel frame and, and the external walls are encased in concrete. So your evidence here where the steelwork or the concrete over the steelwork is expanded and spalled off. And that's what we've got evidence of here. So a rare glimpse of a vast space built for warehousing, but the Great Depression hit and it was never used. After refurb, who knows? Five-storey arts venue, film studio, nightclub, and don't forget, there's an even bigger space inside the Gateshead Towers on the south side. In 1928, King George V, the first to cross the new link from Newcastle to Gateshead. 22 years ago, my dear father opened the King Edward VII Bridge. Now it is with great pleasure that I dedicate an even more imposing structure to public use. To the noise and clamour of thousands who lined the streets. But the last 20 years has brought new noise and clamour to the Tyne Bridge. 1,200 pairs of kittiwakes, ocean-going gulls, 10 miles up the Tyne from the North Sea, now a tourist attraction, and incredibly, this bridge is the world's most inland colony. And few, if any, know it better than Dan Turner. The first nesting on the Tyne Bridge here was in 1996, and since that year, there's been a gradual increase in the population on the bridge. They've found it obviously in a very pleasant place and good place to nest, and they do very well there. Nationally and globally, the kittiwake population has decreased, and so now the bird is red-listed, it's da down as a vulnerable species. But repairing the bridge, working around breeding kittiwakes, is a major challenge. The solution? Well, obviously, kittiwake hotels. We'll put the scaffold up when the kittiwakes aren't here over the winter months, and we'll provide what's called kittiwake hotels, additional roosts for the kittiwakes when they come back in the summer, in the, in the spring and the summer. Kittiwake Hotels, you've got to explain that one. So basically it's a scaffold tower with ledges on it, which will replicate the ledges that the roost on the bridge, and they'll use that over the summer months when they're here. Newcastle City Council means what it says when it comes to caring for this endangered species. As we film, talks break out between officials and Dan Turner, who studied the birds for more than 30 years. Turns out, a rope's become entangled with the nesting kittiwakes, but removal only after clearance with several conservation groups. High-level ornithological politics then for the high-level bridge. Several years of this to come. But when it's done, one hell of a birthday in the city that knows how to party. For their Tyne Bridge, beloved by birdies and Geordies alike. <laughs>